Tom here from Lawrence Systems. And if you're like me, you like Synology and you like TrueNAS and maybe you have both of them. I've talked about the pros and cons and I'll leave a video down below of what is good and bad about each of these. And well, in some cases, I end up with both of them. Synology, I think is a wonderful platform. TrueNAS is a wonderful platform. They each have their strength, they each have their weaknesses. But one of the challenges might be to back up your Synology and have a nice holistic backup. And maybe you don't wanna use the Synology C2 service or pay some cloud provider to hold all your data. And maybe you have a TrueNAS that is in a geographically separate area, or maybe even a more broader scenario where you have multiple Synologies like we do, and you want them all backed up to one single TrueNAS in a very easy way to handle it. This is where S3 object storage comes in. I've done a video where I've dove deep how TrueNAS, and it was FreeNAS back when I did the video, but you can use the MinIO, which is built into the TrueNAS server, and use it as an S3 target. And because the Synology Hyper Backup supports S3 targets, and you can set up different buckets for different Synologies, you can take many different Synologies and back them all up there in a very easy way. The other advantage using this protocol is it can be transported across the internet, even if you don't have a VPN. Now, I would still recommend putting everything behind a VPN, things should be as secure as possible. But the S3 protocol when using HTTPS does offer a layer of encryption. And as long as no one gets your keys to that, uh, it is safe. As you may have heard from different security problems that occur when people leave their buckets open or leave the keys out somewhere where they can be acquired and people can log into those buckets. Provided those two factors are mitigated, you can now transport this. The other option is if you know the IP address from which the Synology would be coming from, you can also just set your firewall rules to filter for only the IPs that you have put on allow list and make this a pretty secure setup overall. But before we get started in these details, if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you like to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. The first thing we need to do is set up the S3 storage. I have another video where I've dove deep into this topic. There's a lot of different fun things you can do with it, but we'll go through the basics in here just to show you how easy it is to get set up. We are using TrueNAS 12.0 U 6.1, the latest release as of November of 2021. And we're going to have to create a spot for this data to go. We're going to go over to the storage to pool, and we're just going to add a data set. And we'll call this data set S3 for Synology. Now, the nice thing is this is very simple because we call this S3 for Synology and leave everything else here absolutely generic and hit submit. You don't have to worry about permissions because that's going to happen over here. When we go to services, you're going to go over to the S3 service. And uh, we'll actually call this one Synology. I'd actually apparently set this up before. So I already had a key in there and we'll call the key Synology 123. I highly recommend you choose something more secure than this. And the port, choose the port that you're looking for, bind the IP address to the one that you're looking for. As I mentioned, you can transport this over the internet. This is what makes it very simple when you're dealing with S3 object storage. It's port 9000 or port whatever you set it to, and that's the only thing that needs to be done. So even if you're doing this over a VPN or routed network, there's not a bunch of ports to configure. There's not a bunch of different things. Or if you're routing this publicly over the internet, you could always filter and have a firewall rule that says only allow coming from the IPs of maybe remote Synologies you have are the only ones allowed to talk to that. So a couple different options you can think about here. It does use a certificate. We're going to use the FreeNAS default certificate for the transport. It will work with Synology with an unsigned certificate. But of course, you could go through and set this up to have its own signed certificate if you wanted, even possibly use a Let's Encrypt one. It goes beyond the scope of this video, but those are all possibilities here. And we're going to leave Enable Browser checked, and then we're going to choose that S3 for Synology. It's selecting a data set with MinIO removes all existing permissions for the data set in any nested directories. So you have to make sure you're either creating this new or willing to lose whatever's in there. It's going to set all the permissions and delete everything within that. Now, MinIO is the video topic that I said I'll leave a link down below. If, for example, because we only can set one key, one access key, one secret key for this particular bucket. If you wanted to set multiple, you'd build them all in separate individual jails. Just a little side note. If you... Then we hit save. Pretty simple. Then we just go down here to the S3. We're going to enable it. And uh, definitely want it to start automatically. So now it's going to start on startup. That's all we have to do inside of TrueNAS over here in Synology. You'll notice that I've had at least one job running right now. I wanted to make note of this, that if you are running 
any type of iSCSI. It needs to have a separate backup. The Hyper Backup does not back up the iSCSI. And this is a really simple task to set up. You can say LUN Backup Task. What the LUN Backup Task does is goes ahead and sets up a schedule. If you put it on schedule, if you only want it to run once, but probably you want things backed up on a schedule. You set this to run and it creates a backup of the iSCSI LUN into a file that can be backed up or a series of files in a folder. So if we go and see where we target it under destination here, we directory iSCSI backup, we go over here to file station, iSCSI backup, there's those files. It does not keep revisions of them. It just runs as a schedule, whatever schedule you may set. But if you do not do this, when you're doing the next hyper backup task, you'll notice that iSCSI is not part of what gets backed up at all. That's why they have that separate. Then we're going to go over here to the data backup task. So easy enough here. And then we're going to go over and choose S3. Now, instead of Amazon S3, we're going to choose custom server URL. And the server address is going to be https 192.168.3.213 colon 9000. Don't need to slash at the end. Now, this colon 9000 and the 213, that's the IP address of the TrueNAS system that we had set up on there. Also, if we want to test, we can test something real quick. We're going to open up a new browser, put that in, and then we can try our Synology. And Synology 123, and if everything goes well, hey, we're in here and we're able to log in. And as I said, we got the IP address from the machine itself, and then we told it which one to bind to. If you have multiple IP addresses, I mean, you can have them on multiple or have them on all of them. I only have it bound to this particular IP address. Back over to here, we do want to choose V4. Then we want to choose the access key of Synology, and then our not-so-great passwords of Synology, one, two, three. Bucket name. There's no buckets in here, so we're going to create a new bucket. It's at this point, if I were to type the password wrong, it would have told me it wouldn't be able to talk to it. So we're going to say Synology Backup. And I probably should spell backup right. There we go. All buckets are supposed to be fully lowercase, but dashes are acceptable, so we can put a dash in there if we want. But they do have to all be lowercase to not cause any errors. Directory, Albert1. Happens to be that this system is called Albert. I, we'll just leave it at that because it really doesn't matter. Then we go next. We're going to ask, what do we want to back up? Yeah, we're just going to check the box and say, back it all up. So this is everything that's in here, surveillance station and things like that. Please note when you're backing up surveillance station, that may not be ideal for you to back that up because this is specifically backing up all the data that's in there. Uh, this can be a problem if you're backing up offsite because, well, if you're creating a lot of data, a lot of recordings with surveillance station, it may not be able to transport over. So we'll go ahead and actually maybe skip that like this and... Yeah, we'll leave it on for now, I guess. But you kind of get the idea that you got to think about that one before you're doing it. This is local, so we can do this. I want all the applications backed up. Now, this is where you get another option for surveillance station. You can go back over here and not back up any of the data within surveillance station. So we can do it like this. Next. But then go here and back up package only or recordings only. I like this feature because you have a lot of work you may put into setting up 20 cameras, configuring them, setting all the options on those cameras, and you make sure those package settings are all backed up. This is an easy way to do that. But if you want to back up the uh, recordings as well, it can do that. And I recommend doing it through this method right here. And I'll show you why when we do it. So I'm going to back up them just for example purposes. But like I said, if you're doing offsite backups, that can be a problem. Now here is the problem, actually, we should call this true NAS S3 backup. You can choose all the different options here for task, enable change log, compress data, highly recommend compressing it, enable transfer encryption. Hey, why not? You can't have enough encryption. So encrypt things that are going over encrypted connection sounds like a great idea when you want it to run. Client side encryption. I actually really recommend this and we're going to put a really weak password in here. The reason I really recommend doing it this way is because you never know what can happen to the box on the other end. If the box on the other end gets compromised, if you encrypt it right here, it's encrypted prior to it leaving. So I'm always just more encryption is better. So this is referring to the transport layer encryption, but you actually want the files at rest to be encrypted too. But warning, if you lose this password, you also have no way to restore anything. So if you ever have to restore this analogy, you don't know what password you use, you're in a lot of trouble. Recommend saving that password in a password manager. Then we're going to get the warning. After you've encrypted, if you forget this password, a key is lost, your backup will never be restored. Yes, we understand this. 
backup rotations. From the earliest version, just keep number of versions. Smart Recycle is actually really clever, and it's one I kind of recommend if you're not sure what to do. Just click the Smart Recycle, and you'll have eight weeks, six weeks, four weeks, and two weeks. So you have high density, and then it starts purging them and scattering them out, so it only keeps some of the really old versions there. In case you have to go back really far, but it's you can also do customized retention settings. Beyond the scope of here to go in all of them, there's so many different scenarios, but just kind of decide how many revisions of things or how many days you'd like to keep things, and that's what the retention options are. So we're going to end done. Of course, now we want to say backup now. Yes. And we got here with this little file that downloaded was a key encryption if we need to upload it. If we don't use the password, we can actually use this key to go ahead and do that. And the backup is running right now. Now, there's not a whole lot on this analogy, so this completed relatively quickly. So we have all of 86 megabytes that are backed up right now. And you may notice that it's not performed an integrity check. That is actually part of the schedule, but you can force an integrity check anytime you do want to double check the integrity of these backups. By default, when you go into settings and schedule, the integrity check is going to run once a week just to double check all of your backups and see if there's any problems with them. But like I said, we can just force one. I wanted to force one because this is one of the things it's going to ask is either A, to upload that encryption key or put the password in. I'm going to say OK and let it kick off the integrity check real quick. While it's doing the integrity check, we'll switch back over to our true NAS here. And we can see that there's about 87 megs in here and not much compression that we're able to get out of it because, well, it's compressing the backups. And so the backup sizes roughly are going to be really close to each other because there's obviously a few other files that might be in here. Let's go back over to here. Our integrity check was successful. And if we want, we can even run another backup again. And right now, let's delete something, for example, so we can even go here or even better yet, duplicate something. So if we went ahead and. All right, and I pasted this in, so dumped a little bit more data in here. We'll go ahead and run the backup again real quick. So we have at least two backups we've run and then we'll do a test restore to show you how that works. All right, now we've run two backups on it and we can go here to the restore and see the revision. So we go to data backup. Here's that one. We see this. Now here we can restore and we'll see that the 936 or the 939. And this is any of the configurations for Synology. Don't do a system configure restore if we want to restore any of these shared folders. The shared folder exists and an apps will be overwritten by the previous version. So we have two versions here. We can choose which version of the file set we want. Pretty simple to do. Or we can go next and restore one of the applications. And actually, that's the demo I really wanted to do, is what happens when we have to restore a full application, such as Surveillance Station. And I think we have a camera in here with some recordings. We do. Camera's currently disconnected. We set up a test cam. We were doing some demos here in the office. And real exciting view of the wall there. But it might be important to someone. There's like two minutes of video of looking at the wall. But let's pretend there's a lot more configuration that we spent a lot more time and it wasn't just looking at the wall. So therefore it's important details. And we're going to go ahead and hit delete. And we want to remove all recordings, including locked items. We're going to hit OK. They're gone. If I go back over here, recordings, I've lost my camera. I've lost all the recordings related to it. Now what? Go back over here to our restore data. TrueNAS S3. Next. I don't need to worry about shared folder. And even though I didn't choose the Synology Surveillance Station folder, because we did choose to back up the recordings as well as the settings, we're going to head here and hit Next. All right, the selected application will be disabled during restoration. Makes sense to me. I need it back. It's kind of broken right now, so it's going to stop these applications from running. It's going to understand that I selected the Synology Surveillance Station, including all of the related folders to back up the data in there. Hit OK. Then we'll go over back to Synology Surveillance Station. Go look at our recordings. Recordings are back. I can look at the wall again. There's those exciting wall videos. And if I look at the IP camera, it's trying to talk to it, but I know the camera is disabled, so it's activating and it'll eventually time out because the camera was, well, it's turned off right now. It's not just looking at the wall. Using TrueNAS as an S3 target is really straightforward, simple, easy to route over the internet. Also, if you have multiple Synologies, at multiple locations, you want to back them up to one single central TrueNAS, that's easy enough to do, and you can create buckets for each one. 
of note. They will share the same key for each one because they share the same key. If one Synology were ever to get compromised and someone were able to somehow extract the keys out of that particular Synology, they would have the keys to get into that bucket. So that may be a concern. There is a use case in that point for maybe building out a series of separate jails, each with their own key, each with their own unique identity and different port numbers. There's different strategies you can do to mitigate this to make things more isolated from each other. But from a simplicity standpoint, because this will transport encrypted over the internet, and of course I highly recommend using a VPN, but I know that isn't always as practical uh, in some scenarios. This is a great way to get especially your offsite Synology backed up or even just looking for an easy way to back up everything on your Synology to your true NAS that is sitting next to it right there. So pretty simple way to do it. So I wanted to make this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful and thank you. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.